The most difficult thing about crypto and Cardano right now is accepting the harsh truth that adoption and momentum are really only being determined by two things, the Bitcoin halving cycle and arbitrary governance. Unfortunately, our only play right now is probably waiting out both of those things. Ready? Let's go. Today, we are going to discuss the extremely arbitrary nature of the relationship between crypto and government, the UN in Cardano, auctions on Hydra, and some project news. If you were completely unsurprised to find out that the Commissioner Emperor also gets to rule on life and death in the Colosseum, or if you're finding value in these videos each weekday, please consider delegating to the Army of Spies stake pool, ticker AOS. I know that some of you already saw the clip that I'm about to play for you because I put it into the written version of the Cardano Rumor Rundown yesterday. So I know some of you have already watched this, but I think this is important to illustrate the degree to which modern governments just sort of generally, I'm just going to use the term governments to address pretty much all of the, all of the modern governance. They're supposed to be rule based. They all say they're rules based, that they everything they do is based on rules, not the arbitrary whims of whoever happens to be in power. But what we see time and time again is that while this is kind of true, it's not really true. And the way we know that is that often one administration will come in, they'll be very pro something. They'll say that the that you know X thing totally aligns with the rules. And then the next administration comes in and they say, absolutely not. X thing does not align with the rules. And we've kind of seen this with crypto. And sadly, Cardano is still a part of crypto. So if all of crypto is suddenly declared not in favor, whatever administration is doing that, they figure out a way to make the rules align with their policy goal. And in the case of the current administration, the policy goal is very much crypto bad. What can we do to stymie crypto, to strangle crypto in the cradle, to suppress crypto, to keep crypto from growing? What can we do to keep crypto from disrupting the traditional way of doing things. We need to hold crypto down. And they always manage to find a way to make the rules achieve that goal. And this is not a new story. This has been going on as long as there have been governments. I'm sure historians could happily give you examples of this from whatever time period you wish, classical Greece, Mesopotamia, whatever. I'm sure this is just about human nature and governments, not so much about anything from modern times. But the clip I'm about to play, I think, illustrates this point well. So we already know in the U.S. and in many other jurisdictions that three quarters of the market are not ICOs or not what would be called securities, even in the U.S., Canada and Taiwan, the three jurisdictions that follow something similar to the Howey test that we've talked about. Three quarters of the market is non-securities. It's just a commodity, a cash crypto. So that clip was from the 2018 MIT course that Gary Gensler taught. And at the time, all of us in crypto knew he was teaching this class and we'd all seen clips of it. And it actually looked like Gary Gensler, once he became SEC chairman, was probably going to be a good SEC chairman because he actually understood crypto. And he does understand crypto. But we run into this whole arbitrary governance thing. It didn't really matter what he thought about crypto back in these days in 2018 at MIT, because whatever he thought then was irrelevant to the policy goals of the current administration. And no matter what, the person that the current administration put in as SEC chairman was going to be a good soldier of that policy. They were going to make sure that the policy of the administration got carried out. And it just turned out that the policy of the administration was going to be very anti-crypto. So while the, the hypocrisy of all this is blinding to pretty much everybody in crypto, I think anybody in crypto who's watched this clip over the last two days 
was kind of staggered by the blinding hypocrisy of the chair of the SEC saying three quarters of the market is not securities and then becoming SEC chair and saying pretty much everything is a security. I mean, basically, I think he said everything is a security minus Bitcoin. This is a pretty big flip flop. And he obviously understood crypto back in those days. It's not like he didn't understand crypto in these days. He was teaching a course on crypto at MIT. The person who put up that video clip isn't done. They put this up today. Y'all thought I was done. First video was just the tip at Coinbase legal team. Hit me up. I don't want the SEC lawyers seeing it first. I got 150 plus more timestamps. He's calling it hashtag Gensler tapes. This is going to get pretty embarrassing for Gary Gensler. It's pretty hard to reconcile those two. I can see the next, uh, you know, House hearings, the next House Financial Services Committee hearings, I could see a lot of uh, a lot of congressmen, Congress people, congressmen and women on the other side of the aisle from the current administration playing this clip for Gary Gensler and asking him why his opinion changed. And of course, Gary Gensler is Gary Gensler. He'll have you know, some kind of a very slick response. He'll say he learned more about crypto or, you know, back then in 2018, three quarters of them were actually not securities, but there's, there have been a lot more cryptocurrencies, you know, created since then. And now pretty much all of them are securities, something like that. He'll have some kind of very slick response, but this is going to be embarrassing for Gary Gensler and it probably won't change anything because governments don't really care. They don't really care about the rules-based thing. They really care about making things look like they're just following the rules. They're just interpreting the rules. But really what they want is to achieve their policy goals. That's all they care about. They're going to they're gonna contort the rules to achieve their policy goals. And there's not really a whole lot we can do about it in crypto. There's not a whole lot the projects can do about it. I think we're just going to have to ride this one out. I don't know how long we're going to have to put up with a government, at least in the US, that's so anti-crypto, the next election will determine that. But however long this lasts, there's probably not a lot any of us in crypto can do. It's kind of the same thing with the Bitcoin halvening cycle. It's going to impact the crypto markets, at least, at least for the foreseeable future, no matter what we do. We're going to be stuck with these crazy, crazy parabolic markets with crazy highs and depressing lows for the foreseeable future. I think this is just sort of the reality of crypto. But the good thing is these times always pass. And if you can just hang on and chill for a little bit, things always seem to get better. Maybe the most interesting thing is that it looks like not every single government type entity hates us right now. Here's a post. The official UN refugee agency has a stake pool on Cardano and is using NFT proceeds to fill the stake pool, providing a long-term charity stream while also helping to decentralize the Cardano network. If this was happening on any other chain, it would make headlines on every crypto news outlet. And sure enough, the post being referenced here is from Switzerland for UNHCR, which apparently is the UN refugee agency's partner for Switzerland. And it looks like they are indeed talking about Cardano NFTs. So this is interesting. At the same time as we have government agencies like the US SEC seemingly attacking all of crypto, we've got the United Nations turning around and saying, hey, no, actually, this would be great. We can use this to maybe help refugees. Are you curious about real world use of Hydra? Today is your day, April 27th, 1 p.m. UTC. There will be a Twitter space with IOG and M Labs all about Hydra for auctions. They say IOG is collaborating with M Labs to propose a way for handling auctions of digital assets using Hydra protocols. This will allow Cardano developers to start using Hydra for scalability in common practice. Finally, we haven't talked about any metaverse projects in a long time, so I'm going to leave you with a little bit of metaverse news. It looks like the builder tool is now live in Carta Station, so you can go ahead and build out your parcels in Carta Station if you're so inclined. I hope you're having a great week. Don't forget, today is Cardano 360. Hope you're having a great week, though, and I'll talk to you tomorrow.